now that you've learned all about an audit checklist, it's interesting to understand how this translates into your internal audits. Honestly, there really wouldn't be anything that different. I might suggest that as an internal auditor, it's more likely that you have, or the business has, a pre-existing company provided audit checklist. This means that you might not create your own manual checklist and instead would use the business's pre-existing audit checklist. This doesn't mean that you won't also write your own checklist manually as you work through the audit. However, you will still need to use the company provided checklist. If you're not already aware of any company provided checklist, then take some time to ask around to see what might already be used. These pre-existing checklists shouldn't restrict you in following up audit trail. So make sure that they're flexible for you to use. And also make sure they're not this tick and flick type. This is really dangerous as then there may be the tendency to do just that, tick and flick and not really dig in deep to the audit evidence. It's as simple as that. So I'll see you in the next video where I share with you the differences with internal audit opening meetings. Don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.